Well, it is absolutely beautiful. Look at this little male. He's trying to catch flies as he's sitting perched on this tree. It is absolutely beautiful. Couldn't ask for a better first introduction to this little boy. Isn't that amazing? Looks like he's taking it very easy. Shame, it must be difficult when your tummy is full and you've eaten too much. But really, for us, that is absolutely spectacular. Now, I forgot to mention earlier when we were asking about naming of these cubs, this actual, this little one. Oh, isn't that incredible? Isn't he stunning? Look at those markings around his eyes. So this little guy was actually meant, was named through our TV shows that we do with Nat Geo. And so what happened was we got the names from Chitwa and then there was a vote as to see who which name all of you in the general public liked and Tumba was the one we settled on. Now for those of you who don't know what Tumba means, Tumba means a boulder and that's because he was born under a suite called Boulders at Chitwa Chitwa. So it's one of their suites is named Boulder and that's where it comes from. So that's where his name is. But it, I think it fits him. It's a nice name. I like Tumba and he really is a beautiful cat. He's just got that typical sort of tundy offspring look. Wabi Yuza had a very similar nose structure. Look at him trying to catch flies. Isn't this amazing? What are you doing, silly boy? Oh, I think he almost fell out the tree there. Now where are you going? Come back. Don't go back into the thicket. Oh, it's incredible. There we go. Now we've just got a tail sticking out and an ear on the other side. I'm sure he will change position again. But there's that nice, beautiful long tail that they use to be able to balance and to be able to climb so effectively. It just helps with the counterweight and for them to be able to find a sort of comfortable place to lie and to help with going up and down of trees. And you'll also find that there's a little paw sticking out the bottom there as well. There it is, just hanging down, just to make things more comfortable. He seems to be getting annoyed by the flies quite a bit and that's maybe why he's gone up into the tree is just to actually get away from the flies a little bit but it's not the biggest tree in the world and so I don't think he's going to have too much luck. Now in front of us is actually where the carcass is so I've just spotted the carcass just on the termite mound here so it looks like a young kudu. There we go so there's the leg and you can see a bit of the meat sticking out there so I think it's a young kudu that they've managed to bring down, which is a Tundi special. So Tundi always is after kudu. For some reason, the area that she occupies is a high density of kudu. You can see the thickets that we're in here is very, very dense. And so kudu are, are quite abundant in this area. And she's just worked out the technique to be able to hunt them. Now, this is a quite a small kudu, but I have seen Tundi bring down a fully grown female kudu, which is probably about, I would say, six, seven times her body weight. So you can imagine how much power there is in that little leopard to be able to pull down an animal of that size. She unfortunately then lost it to hyenas, but just for her to be able to bring down such a large kudu was absolutely mind-blowing to me, and we managed to see the whole thing take place, so it was quite incredible. And I don't know where she's disappeared to. She was with Tumba on the branch. We went round, and I can't see her now. I thought maybe she was lying on this side of the termite mound where the carcass is, but I don't see her. Maybe she's gone off to go and have a drink, or oh, she's just found the thicket to lie in. This area is so dense that it's so difficult to see anything. You can see how thick it is. Now, our little Tumba has plopped himself down rather in a bad spot for us. And all we've got is f a foot and a tail hanging down there. Now, if you didn't know any better, it would almost look like he's not alive. I can show you he is very much alive. You can actually see how much he's panting by the movement of his foot. So that's him trying to breathe to cool himself down and it's actually making his foot move quite a bit. It's almost like he's tapping his foot to a song.